Hello, my soccer universe, for another story time from the Austrian Bundesliga, the third round of the 23-24 season. This is up the return of the Linzer Derby, as we call it in German, the Derby of Linz. And it's a home game for Lusk. And it's a, a derby with a very interesting, not necessarily successful, but a very interesting history that I want to talk about. Namely, it is Lusk, the black and whites, against Blau-Weiß Linz, which already have it in the name, they're the blue and whites. But of course the discussion is, is it the 53rd derby in the Bundesliga, or is it the very first one in the Bundesliga between those two teams? One thing is for sure, it's the first Linzer derby since 1997. I actually want to start this derby with talking a little bit about my team, Lusk, who are basically the top dog in this one, the big team uh, in Linz. The older team, they were founded in 1908, uh, had uh, then successes uh, that made them popular throughout at least Upper Austria, if not over Austria. They namely, uh, the first big success was winning the uh, Austrian Amateur Championship in 1931 which you could only win a professional championship if you were from Vienna. So basically it's kind of an Austrian championship, except for Vienna, which many Austrians actually would like to see it this way, unless you live in Vienna, <laughs> of course. Uh, but that aside, uh, then after the war, there was a big, Aus the Austrian league was made and was now over all of Austria. Um, and Lask was uh, in the National Liga. They finished in a second place uh, already in 1962, which was a very credible uh, finish because this was a league only dominated by Viennese teams. And then they became the first team not from Vienna to win the Austrian Championship in 1965. A success that made them actually very popular, not only within Upper Austria and Linz, of course, this was the big one there, but also... Um, in uh, um, all of Austria because this was really a sensation at the team not being from Vienna winning the championship. Fortunately so far it's the only championship and it wasn't even so far that while in the early 70s it was still a successful team. Uh, during the late 70s they got relegated, came back up again, had a, a rather successful period in the mid 80s but then financial trouble started to hit where there were at least two occasions that I can re remember when the club was very close uh, to being liquidated uh, because of um, loads of debt in there, namely the one that I want to talk about now in the early 90s that I remember very, very vividly. However, they always managed to come back from that. However, for the larger story within this video, just remember that during the early 90s, Lusk was not very good uh, and was kind of struggling to stay always between the first and the second league in this kind of gray zone there. Uh, Linz has been, starting with World War II and then afterwards, has been transformed into a uh, industrial town. And there were three big industries in Linz. The first and foremost one is the ironworks uh, industry. First, unified Austrian iron and steel works. Then there's a big chemistry uh, factory there. And then, of course, there was a tobacco factory also in Linz. So those are the kind of the main uh, industries there. And all of these had their own teams as well. And the first team that came up there was from the chemistry in the brilliantly named SV Stickstoff Linz, which means Sports Club Nitrogen Linz, who actually were also in the Nationalliga and I think played four door during the derbies against Lusk, not very successful. Uh, we leave the tobacco works at the side for now because that team uh, per se was never really successful. However, in 1948, it was also Sports Club uh, First Linz, so SK First Linz, the team from the Ironworks were founded with black and white colors and were meant to be the work the team a sports club for all the workers there it was not only football but they got a football team that uh by the late 60s 
actually was successful enough that they moved like Lusk into the newly built, I mean at that point at the stadium in Linz was in the 1950s, uh, built that they, all of these teams moved up there uh, first about 10 years later than Lusk in there. Not drawing the big crowds that Lusk did, uh, however being su relatively successful. They got promotion in the first year that they were playing in the Linz Stadium. Um, Verden promoted for the uh, 1969-1970 season and four years later incredibly uh, got another championship for Linz nine years after Lusk. It was not the second team, there was Innsbruck in between. But you see at this time Linz was actually on top because Lusk was already pushing a little bit earlier for that. And the 70s are definitely the most successful period where first definitely was on top of Lusk. They also changed in 1972 their colors from black and white to blue and white to distinguish themselves from Lusk, of course. I would be curious to see how that one was received back then, but now it's the identity of that team. They qualified for the last time though for Europe in 1980 and from that moment on they were a decent team, mostly mid-table, but you know, like Lusk during the late 80s and early 90s also struggling a little bit with finances uh, and not being a top team anymore. Uh, and of course the first or the Ironworks also hit hard times in the 80s like most of industrial um, companies. And to the degree that they reduced funding and then in 91 actually stopped funding. At this time, the club had to be renamed because they couldn't be called after the company any, 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 anymore. It was then renamed first into FC Stahlinz, football club Steel Linz. Uh, but it still had kind of the connotation that it's supported by the Ironworks, which it wasn't. And so two years later, in 93, they dropped that name and were only FC Linz at that point. Uh, and this was also at the time, 93-94, when both teams did not qualify for the newly created 10-team Bundesliga. So they played in the second league. Uh, Lask coming, I think, of a rather dicey period. You know, they, the liquidation process was resolved in such a way that only a part of the debt needed to be repaid and the team could be rebuilt. And actually, Lask got a very successful team make it into the first league uh, and FC Linz also. However, it was still all not rosy. And it was to a degree that after this first Bundesliga season, uh, there was talk that while Linz per se as an economic area is very rich, the troubles that Lusk were going through and also that the support from the Ironworks is not happening for FC Linz and, and, and anymore. There were serious discussions. Can a city like Linz have two teams? Shouldn't the two teams combine? And in a so-called fusion, fusion of the two teams, to kind of uh, combine forces and then this one super club, if you would like, can get all the support that they want and it would be a clean slate. And this was rumored already in 95. And I have to say personally, my first question was, we have FC Linz, we have Lusk. What would the new name be? Because FC Linz would kind of be an obvious name, but this was already taken. Uh, how would you call such a team? That was number one. The second one uh, is what would, would be the colors. And that actually scared me back then because, you know, I am also a Milan fan. We have a blue team, we have a black team. Would this be blue and black? No, I'm not sure I can support this. Uh, there were talks and it was about to happen. But then I remember being part of a demonstration on the main street in Linz uh, against this, this uh, fusion. And it was called off kind of in the last minute. However, FC Linz, you know, had I think they had to go to the second league, then um, stayed in, came up again. It was curious times because on the other side there was also loads of excitement. There was like Lusk had a new coach uh, coming with Friedel Rausch. Hopes were high, beating Werder Bremen away from home. Eftelins incredibly got Hugo Sanchez, Real Madrid star, to play for them for a season in the second league. 
I remember seeing him on the main street in Linz with my buddy and we were following around. This is a world star. This is Hugo Sanchez. He was playing for FC Linz. Unbelievably. Also in 94, FC Linz made it all the way to the cup final, uh, losing 4-0 to Austria Wien. But you know, uh, it was kind of up and down. It was interesting times. But it was always like over many clubs in Austria, it was always hanging. Is there enough money there? And in 1997, the teams were back uh, together in the first league, league again. Lusk had established themselves as a mid-table, but not more team. Wanted to push in the next dimension. FC Linz kind of was always staying within the league, but barely. And then it happened very quick. I remember I was doing my military replacement service at uh, first aid service. And I was assigned on uh, with a friend that I made who was actually an FC Linz fan, a so-called first law. And he comes in, we were assigned to drive on that day, and he comes in, have you heard? The fusion is going through. My first reaction. What's the new name? Lusk. What are the colors? Black and white. Sigh of relief on my part. However, I immediately said, man, that must suck for you. And that's exactly how it happened. The team, the new super club, was then called, in, mostly in the media, it was never clear to me how it's over. FC Lusk Linz. So combining the two names, which makes no sense because the L in Lusk stands for Linz. So having Linz in there, then the logo, you see it even here, it said Lusk Linz because they had it already before the Fusion in there. Uh, so it was always kind of, you know, to emphasize that we're from Linz because that was kind of this idea. Everyone asked, where is Lusk from? Well, it's from Linz. It's the biggest town with L in Austria. Uh, but it didn't feel right. And there were discussions of maybe having the amateur team uh, play in blue and white. It was, of course, a big win for Lusk because now their squad doubled and they could pick and choose. In the end, only the goalkeeper of FC Linz, who was the best goalkeeper, one of the best goalkeepers in the league at the time, uh, came to Lusk. But hardly any of the other, if any of the players were kept, they all went other places, which is a little bit of a shame. But most importantly, first Linz actually had the youth academy for Upper Austria, which now went to Lusk, which is the other big win that they had right there. But in the end, all that meant is we had one seemingly super club with an old fan base in black and white and the blue and white fan base were looking at nothing so what to do with this blue and white fan base who have sworn they will not support the new super club because of course i mean you have been all your life against the black and white part i mean you're not gonna now change the colors because the new team is like the old team it is literally a dissolution and i'm saying this now as a lusk fan i could empathize with those fans yes i was happy it was not my team that was got there but i really could feel a this was not right that this was done this way because i it was still not clear to me that it will be get better uh just having one team and b you're completely forgetting about a, another fan base um Austria is a, if you will look at the Austrian Bundesliga, we'll get to there. A, it's a history of many fusions that happening. But basically, it's another works team that then stepped up. The Austria Tobacco, the Tobacco Works, uh, who had this nice stadium at the Danube, smallish sta stadium, that was then taken over by a businessman and he re christians them into FC Blau-Weiß Linz, football club Blue and White Linz. As... You know, we're gonna take this disgruntled and abandoned fan base and we have them. And so in 1997, Blau Linz was founded. As the story goes, the early years, Blau Linz was playing, I think, in the fourth league, if I remember correctly, whereas Lusk, at the time, it seemed within a year that they are pushing for the championship. They had a really good 97-98 season, bought many stars, seemingly the, uh, with the new ownership, flushed with cash, got the most famous coach in Otto Baric at the time. Uh, it was all meant to go only up. There was even a game against Sturm Graz, first against second. 
and it all fell apart very, very quickly because our president was a bankier who got his wealth by artificially adding zeros to the balance sheets. So he didn't have the money that he claimed to have. And so very quickly, Lask again found themselves into serious financial troubles and Blauweiss Lint uh, were in the fourth league. And it didn't take long. Lask in 2001 got relegated, was in the second league, struggling there. Blauweiss Lint, meanwhile, actually played well enough that they qualified for the Austrian Cup. And in 2002, guess who had to play in the, who they had to play in the first round a home game lusk and that was the first derby between blau linz and lusk and blau linz won that one three one like the last derby that happened right after the fusion that i didn't talk about uh where blau uh, where FC linz won three nil lusk didn't show up in both of these games and i think at least for the last one that was played in 997 it was clear to kind of pacify the fan base, because if they would have lost, it would have meant even uh, more uh, damage. It did not feel right to lose to Blauweiss Linz the Derby that way, but it's kind of, yeah, let's have the little team there. They, we move on, we hopefully get back. Lusk didn't get back for a long time. Now there have been more meetings uh, between Lusk and Blauweiss Linz. Um, between that cup derby and now that derby that we have now uh most notably lask after a long period got promoted again uh played a short time in the first league until again uh bad management kind of saw them going down and they got relegated again and they had to play the 11 12 season in the second league again and who got promoted blau weiss linz so we had the derby again and Again, it did not look good for Lusk because Lusk were a little bit in a disarray. And Blauweiss, of course, that was the game that meant the most. Three draws and then one loss was the um, record for this season. And it got even worse. Lusk was denied the professional license. So they could not play in the first or in the second league, although they finished, I think, second that season. They were relegated to the third league for one season. Blauweiss Linz was the only professional team in Linz playing up there, and they propagated that. Lusk have been rebranding themselves, and you can see it, Coat of Arms of Up Austria here, and also these shirts, it's now the Coat of Arms of Up Austria. Lusk, although firmly rooted in Linz, always were the teams of Up Austria. Blauweiss Linz used this as saying, we're the team from Linz, so they have the Coat of Arms from Linz on their jerseys. And that started around that time. Uh, I was a little bit ridiculed by the Lusk fans, to be honest. And they got duly relegated. And this was the darkest time in soccer in Linz because for the 13-14 season, it was also the first time ever that no professional team from Linz was playing in one of the top two leagues in Austria. Lusk managed promotion to the second league this day. Of course, they met in a derby in a very attractive league, I have to say, because there were many regional ri r r r rivalries. And this time they met twice and I was there when for the first time Lusk beat Blauweiss Linz 2-0 away from home. And this was the first time I was in the new away sector there. Um, it seemed like the monkey was taken off the back. They leveled the playing field. Now it was two wins, two losses and a bunch of draws. Um, as fate would have it, in the uh, season that Lusk secured promotion to the Bundesliga, Blavis Linz was also promoted. And again, they managed to win one game, although they hadn't won anything before and Lusk has been steamrolling the league. This is how the derbies go. Uh, but it was two wins, one draw, one loss uh, there. But Lusk got promoted and Blavis Linz did not. And that brings us up to today. Now, the most recent history, uh, actually, actually, the relationship between the two clubs, uh, per se, where the fan bases are probably not looking that much eye to eye. The relationship between the clubs is actually not that bad. There were many uh, players that went from Blauweiss Linz then up to the Bundesliga to Lusk. Goiginger is one uh, example, but also the other way around. So there was a little bit exchange. It was also that Lusk was pushing for a new stadium and they were then getting the property of the uh, Linz uh, Stadium that they have been uh, sharing for most of, of the time, but as part of the deal that Lusk can get that, Blauweiss Linz also got the permission to redevelop the Austria Tobacco Grounds in their own smaller stadium. And it is very interesting the way the stadiums are situated. 
the Linzer Stadium is up on a hill close to downtown, but you know the uh, in a posh area, which kind of represents Lusk quite well because it's more of a bourgeois uh, fan base, more conservatively related. Whereas Blauweiss Linz, their stadium is at the Danube close to the industrial quarter because, as we said, established they, their fan base is more uh, socialist workers fan base. I want to actually end it to talk about how weird this rivalry actually is. Now, we have established already, uh, we had a Linzer Derby in three iterations uh, with different names as the opponent of Lusk. It was always Lusk against another uh, workers team. Um, but curiously enough, it's a rivalry where the bigger team is not the workers team, which is usually what happens that uh, the working class team usually has a bigger fan base in most of these derbies. But here it is that the established team is not the workers team. And I have a hard time finding uh, another city where this is the case. I have found one and it's one uh, comparison that I find very apt but I don't necessarily find it flattering, and it's Munich, uh, where Bayern Munich is also more the conservative uh, team, whereas 1860 Munich is from the working class, and of course Bayern Munich is this behemoth, much, much bigger and much more successful than Lusk ever was, um, and 1860 is the working class team, the much smaller one that, you know, may uh, get up there and tease the big uh, guys overall. So that's the closest one. I would like to know if you know another one of these. Anyway. In any case, how much did you know of this story? I hope this was an interesting video for me. In case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you more about Austrian soccer soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.